that night could well have matched or exceeded and become the worst day and the greatest loss of life in Victoria Police's history. Max was different to any other criminal we'd ever come up against. He was clinical, he was ruthless, and he was prepared to kill. The gunman began a game of cat and mouse, seemingly intent on picking them off. There was no two minds about this. We were on our way to a gun battle. It's a night seared into the minds of police forces across the country. A lone gunman opens fire on five police officers in a series of brutal, cold-blooded and unprovoked attacks. And the gunman is on the loose. The months to come would see one of the biggest manhunts in the state's history, ending in another shootout with police. So basically there's two rules in a gunfight. Rule one is have a gun. Rule two is have the biggest gun. Shocking night. Boring old night. It was going to be a long night for Sergeant Brian Stook and Senior Constable Peter Steele. They were watching and waiting for a factory burglar to strike again. I think it's about that time for coffee, isn't it? It was in the middle of winter, it was cold, and we rugged up. We, you know, prior to each shift, we'd buy a little supply of nibbles to eat on during the night and occupy ourselves that way and uh, virtually just sit and wait. So just pull it on yourself. A few hours into the shift, right. they had company. I'll be right. Just uh, prior to uh, midnight, a uh, yellow Cortina uh, just cruised into Viking Court, drove very slowly around and turned, turned around at the end. Looks a bit sus. Very sus. With suspicions aroused, the police set off after the car. They wanted to know what the driver was doing in the area. The driver stopped and seemed cooperative. Well, Sergeant Stook and Senior Constable Steele did a very good job in their initial intercept. They very professionally conducted themselves, where they actually asked, asked the offender who he was, he advised them who he was, and he then produced his licence to drive a motor car. Police did a routine registration check on the car. B-A-R-7-6-2. Can I ask you to step out of the car, please, sir? His driver's licence had the name Max Clark. But police had no idea of the background of the man they had stopped. Can I ask you to open the video car, please? The burglar they were hunting was breaking into factories through the roof. After a routine search of the car, we, we, we discovered in the boot of the car that there was a, a knotted rope, which again led to our suspicions that this uh, fitted the MO uh, of the person who was breaking into the, the factories. Looks like we might have to take a drive back down to the police station, mate. Right? What happened next was the last thing Brian Stook expected. He broke away and instinctively I chased. But the chase didn't last long. Max Clark stopped, turned and pointed a gun at him. It was just totally unexpected. It was frightening disbelief. He fired a shot uh, which knocked me to the ground. My partner had drawn his revolver and he was shot through the shoulder, which threw his revolver to the ground. As I got towards the back of the police car and turned, 
That's when I was uh, shot again. I was lying there. I couldn't move to to access the gun that I that I had. So I was just lying there, just uh, just sort of open to whatever might happen next. And unfortunately, that was to be shot twice more while I was lying on the road. Despite shooting two police officers, Max calmly got back in his car and headed for home, knowing police had his address and would soon be on his tail. He'd gone there to tool up and pick up extra weapons, which he did. And he got into a green Ford Fairlane, which was one of his vehicles. Uh, he took off and that kicked off a, uh, a police chase, a high speed chase. I was in the car with uh, Sergeant Ray Kirkwood. And the pursuit continued down Heatherton Road. We joined in behind. Just absolutely screaming down the road. He was going that hard, he blew the engine up in this thing. With his car out of action, Max was on foot. Graeme Sace and Ray Kirkwood had him in their sights. Because I recall thinking that I needed to get out of the vehicle and we'd be some type of foot pursuit. All right, we've got him here. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm all right. But instead, he turns and he runs straight at the police car. What's he doing? Oh, shit. Get down, get down! Get down, get down! Helicopter's over the top. It was very bright, very loud, and he drops down, double-handed combat stance with a revolver. And our eyes met and locked. He really only has to reach through the broken window to, to effectively execute me. And the re reaction is to get down into as much as I can into the foot, footwell of the vehicle and put the revolver in my left hand and just hold it above my head in his general direction and fire to repel what I thought was going to be uh, an inevitable execution at that point. He then walks around the front of the vehicle and fires before fleeing. And unfortunately, two of those rounds uh, struck Ray. So this is the second time he'd been in involved on the same evening in a gun battle with the police where he came out victorious. Police had no